set against the Boilermakers. Yeah, definitely. Again, we can see that this Penn, this Maryland team is very up and down, but especially in the beginning of the season, they showed a lot of strength and resilience in a lot of these matches. We're seeing towards the end, it could be fatigue. It could just be, you know, jitters, everything like that. But that's what this Maryland team can put up a good fight. Maryland has some young talent on their team, and we'll see. John Spawn, the freshman out of Lewis Center, Ohio, will get us started. And right away, we'll have it go out of play off of Penn State. Pedraza will set it, and this time Taylor Trammell will get her first kill. This is definitely something that Penn State has always been successful in, no matter, you know, coming into this new era with the new head coach and then going into and going back to the Russ Rose era, they've always just been strong offensively. Far side, Morrissey was blocked down by Zoe Weatherington. The senior right side has been phenomenal on the offensive side, but also right here on the defensive side, making a play early. Left side, Schnitta can't get it. Pedraza sets it on that side, blocked away, but a nice play by Weatherington. Pedraza, Weatherington just taps it over. Schnitta again. Who wants this one? Long rally here for this fourth point. And that one way too much off the arms of Spawn and out of play. Witherington has again just been one of those go-to hitters for Penn State. She's able to hit from any side, side of the court no matter what ball she's given, which makes her a strong hitter. Maryland in system here, Schnitta. And this time, Schnitta gets it to go. Samantha Schnitta, the transfer from Ole Miss, has really stepped it up big time for this Maryland team in recent weeks, Alexa. Yeah, definitely she's able to, again, step in, and no matter what ball she's given, able to set her hitters up in a great position and be successful. And that serve from Gunter will sail out of play. Right now, still early on in the match, but Maryland does have to focus on minimizing their errors. We saw in that Wisconsin match that they weren't able to minimize their errors early on, so definitely they need to work on that coming into this tough match. Bilinovic serve. Near side, Schnitta again. What a play to keep it in by Grimes. Maryland with another shot, Morrissey deflected out of play. Morrissey has also been an offensive weapon for this Maryland team. They did lose their second primary outside, Layla Ivey, but Morrissey was able to step in and create those plays for Maryland. Violation on Penn State. We're all tied at four. Both teams hitting 125 so far through these first eight points. Here's Aaron Angle's serve. On the far side, blocked down by Rohrbach and Morrissey. Maryland in system, Dowler sets it, Morrissey blocked at the front. Oh, and a nice play on that far side, and Maryland has the lead. That was a great spot by Morrissey, right in that T line, at that 10 foot line. Great spot, the defender, she was in her right position, but again, it's a really hard angle as a defender to get there. Morrissey has seen her time on the floor increase significantly in recent weeks. There she is again. Hannah, Cameron Hannah has her first kill. And ends a three nothing Maryland run. 
Again, both these teams are very strong offensively, so it's no surprise that we are seeing a tie game at this point. Former Clemson Tiger out of Lansing, Illinois will serve it. Dowler right back far side. Free ball is sent by Rohrbach. Near side, Rohrbach, the freshman on the board, Maryland. Back in front. So even though that ball did get a touch, the refs wind, wind up calling a net touch on Penn State. It was a really bad net touch there, so it really has to be aware as a hitter going up and jumping for that ball. Edge coach Adam Hughes in his sixth season with this Maryland team. They've clinched at least a 500 season for the third straight year. Far side, Sire. That one deflected back by Ali Holland, the leader in blocks for this Penn State team. Ali, Ali Holland has just been, again, a force for Maryland. Whenever she's able to get to the front row, she's just absolutely been a force on the defense and offensive end. She averages over a block per set, and she'll serve it. Near side, Rohrbach, you bet. How about this start from the freshman, a top 150 recruit, and she has had a phenomenal year for this Maryland team, Alexa. Yes, she's been able to follow behind Anastasia Russ and learn from her as well. A little bit of miscommunication won't matter, but this time Dowler, too much on it. Back and forth here in set number one. Alexa, what have you seen from both these teams so far? Both these teams, again, are pretty strong offensively and defensively right now. They're playing, they're playing really disciplined right now, which is great to see, especially from this Maryland team who has had a couple of games where they haven't been staying as disciplined. But it's great to see that both teams are staying disciplined right now. Sire far side. Weatherington and some force on it from her. Penn State is back in front by one. A lot of Penn State fans in attendance here. Far side, Sire tries to just tap it and somehow kept in play, but looks like too many touches on Penn State. That would have been some pancake from Jillian Grimes had she been able to get it up. I feel like this season Grimes hasn't really gotten the flowers that she really deserves. And the same thing on the other side with Gunter. I feel like both of these Zabaros have been really strong this season. They really haven't gotten the flowers they deserve. Russ blocked it. On the opposite side, good touch. Somehow kept down, but right there to follow it up was Jess Merzik. Merzik, a name that we expect to call a lot this evening. Penn State's leader in kills. I think I did say before the broadcast, I wanted to see if Gunter was going to try to pass the ball off her forehead, and unfortunately it happened. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> Gunter sets it up for Sire. This one it will deflect out of play. Sam Sire, a pivotal part of this Maryland offense for the third straight year, and she's got her second kill. Sires, again, one of those hitters where as soon as she is going early, that Maryland's able to get something going and have momentum shift in their favor. And a serve from Spawn out of play. It's a second error on this Maryland team and against a team, a caliper like Penn State, can't have too many of those. Yeah, definitely Penn State is a team that will capitalize on those errors. And definitely right now, Maryland really just needs to lock in and really take away those unforced errors. On the far side, Holland blocked it. In front, kept in play. Pedraza sets it through. Near side, Schnitta finds the open floor. The officials signaled Penn State initially. Let's see. 
the line judges called it for Maryland and they will confirm it is Maryland point. Weatherington like, like a cannon to flex out of play. You see this Penn State team is very aggressive offensively. They really have all their hitters are just very aggressive hitters. They really don't take anything off at any point unless that ball is off for them. They really try to come at you no matter what ball they get. A little bit of trouble for Maryland. They'll get it over though. Pedraza, near side, Hannah. Blocked, but out of play. Cameron Hanna, an AVCA All-American her freshman season. Now a senior with this Penn State team. Phenomenal for them. Blocked by Holland. Penn State up by three. Penn State on a three nothing run now. Alexa, have you noticed any adjustments? It does seem like Maryland right now is taking a little bit off because they did see some blocking errors and some hitting errors. So it does seem like Maryland really stopped that aggressiveness. So really for this Maryland team, they need to stay aggressive. And that's gonna be a service ace as Spawn could not handle it off the serve and Adam Hughes will take. They've, been, have, they've had a little inconsistencies in conference play, but definitely they are as a team that can go back to regionals this year. That one out of play, and this Penn State team really battle tested from the start. Eight losses, but three of them coming very early in the season, including number 11 Florida at the time, number 20 Georgia, and then of course number two Louisville. Yeah, and yeah, definitely having a strong out of conference schedule does make you better going into the NCAA tournament when you are playing those tough teams. Five nothing run is over after the service error. Both teams even at 227 hitting percentage wise. Pedraza set for Hannah. You bet. Anna will keep the serve after her kill. Tough touch from Spawn and Holland right there to get the free ball and put it down. That first touch has been a little bit of a problem for Maryland here in the latter part of this first set. Yeah, definitely you saw Dallar kind of had to take matters into her own hands, but Allie Holland, she stayed disciplined in that middle and was able to see it early. Maryland in system this time. Schnitter, that one deflects off of Holland and out of play. A big kill from the lefty. Yeah, for Maryland, it's great to have a lefty right side again. She's able to take different angles that a right side hitter may not be able to take, and she's more crafty offensively which has proved to help Maryland in tight situations. On the near side, that one off the net and in play. Near side, Rohrbach taps it. Near side again, and Merzik too much on it. Jess Merzik, not someone who will make too many attacking errors for this Penn State team. Maryland fortunate of one right there. Here's Merzik again. And just as I say it, her second in a row. This Maryland team does need a little bit more, more momentum behind them. You can see their energy is not as high right now as they were down a couple of points. But hopefully getting back into this ball game, they're able to bring up their energy. Mersick a third time. She is not going to mess up three times in a row. That was done to perfection. Mm -hmm. 
And the Michigan native. Here comes Penn State. And Schnitter will find the ground again. Samantha Schnitter only started four games at Ole Miss. She came here and wanted a bigger role, and she's got that, and she's excelled in it. Exactly. She's really fell into this role for this Maryland team, again, being, being able to be crafty and aggressive offensively. Nearly a crafty play from Russ there. Merzik, bingo. Penn State up to 19. Again, we do really need to see more energy from Maryland at this point. Right now, Maryland is kind of playing a little scared right now, which can put them more in a hole than what they are right now. So definitely more energy from Maryland. Schnitter, how about that? You could say, maybe she heard me. You definitely say that. Samantha Schnitter is having herself a great first set here. Here's Dowler's serve. Pedraza sets it up. Maryland can get in system here. Russ puts it down, but it's kept in play by Grimes. Another chance offensively for Maryland. Anastasia Russ, yes. Russ, the transfer in 2022 from Pitt. Spent her first year as a red shirt and then spent a lot of time on the bench. And she almost considered quitting volleyball, but came here to Maryland and she rediscovered herself. And she has been phenomenal for this Maryland team. That one out of play, it'll end the Maryland run. Unfortunately, we are seeing a trend of some volleyball players at the, co at the D1 college level really thinking about quitting volleyball. There was a player on Texas that she made a whole series on our social media about it. So it's really nice that we're seeing these coaches able to bring that love for the game back to these players. Yeah, and Russ at Pitt said she felt like she couldn't be herself. And since she's come over from Maryland, she's really established better relationships with the team, with Adam Hughes. Penn State following the timeout. And Merzik will be the one to serve it on the near side. Good one so far in set one. Far side, Sire. Whistle against Penn State. Maryland will get the point back. Now, I'm sure if we did have replay today, I'm pretty sure Coach would challenge that call. Sire skims off the net. Pedraza for Weatherington. Blocked, but out of play. It's a big kill there from Weatherington. Penn State is three points away from taking set one. Here it comes from Grimes. And a perfect serve. That one forced Spawn to go to a dive, and she could not get to it. It's another service ace for Penn State, their third. You see Maryland right now is, sub, is subbing in, making a sub right here, which that could be something they need right now. Grimes has played in every set this season. Here's her serve. Morrissey deflects. Hannah, and that deflects off of Russ and out of play. How about the big swing from Cameron Hannah? Set point. That was also a great out of system set by Grimes. She was able to set, back set it, which you normally don't see out of a libero, but she was able to back set it right in perfect position. Grimes serves it. Gunter trying to set up Morrissey. Blocked down, and the point 
will go to Maryland. A little tough to see from our angle. That one came down right at the feet of Holland. Maryland still trails by five. Pedraza sets up Holland. She couldn't get enough on it. Set point once again, here's the serve from Gunter. Pedraza sets it, Weatherington comes all the way back, and that one just barely out of bounds. Wow, Weatherington will win set number one. Blocking wise, it do tend to struggle a little bit. As we saw, Wisconsin is a big blocking team and they weren't able to get through their block at any point. So definitely we're seeing a little bit of that here against this Penn State team. Maryland knows a thing or two about blocking. They spent two years in a row being the number one blocking team in all of NCAA. And that, of course, major part of program block leader Raynell Jones and what she did for that program over her five years at Maryland. This year, they wanted to focus more on their identity being good on the dig and you know getting in system offensively that way. But They've still been pretty solid on the block. Fourth in the Big Ten is definitely respectable considering how great the Big Ten is, especially defensively. Yeah, definitely we're seeing that led by Anastasia Russ where she's able to average almost two blocks per, per set. So coming at you, set number two. Merzik serves it away. Near side, Morrissey. Far side, Hannah deflects out of play off Schnitter. We saw a lot of that in set number one. Hannah's got kill number five. Russ puts it down through the middle. Anastasia Russ is going to be an important part of this game should Maryland keep this one close with Penn State. Yeah, definitely Anastasia Russ was a little bit quieter in that first set, but we're seeing her come alive in this next set. This one will have to come over and pretty rare a miscue from Penn State defensively. Couldn't get a good first touch on it. Maryland will get the lead. Gunter, the transfer from Mississippi State, will serve it. And right in the middle, Taylor Tremel leaves no mistake on that one. Right now, Taylor Tremel is leading the way with six kills right now. I'm hitting at 200 percentage as well. Again, very efficient outside. Near side, Morrissey. And she keeps on getting better and better with that swing. It's been recent weeks where she really started to see her role increase on that outside. Yeah, definitely at first we saw that Sid Bryant was put in that position when, once Layla Ivy was out for those couple of weeks. We saw Sid Bryant, but again, she's a freshman. She's going to make her mistakes as well. And we saw Morrissey step into that role. Hannah has it deflected out of play for yet another kill. Back to Morrissey a little bit. On that outside, a redshirt junior. She'll be back next year in a little bit of uncertainty. Maryland top offensive player the past two years, Sam Sire. Not sure if she'll be back for a grad year or not. So perhaps Adam Hughes kind of looking towards the future. They want to see what they have coming into the offseason. Yeah, definitely because we are approaching the last few players that are having their last using their last COVID year. So we'll definitely see what they'll be able to do with that. Holland. On the near side, couldn't get it cross court. Hannah snipes it off of Daller and out of play. Make that seven a game high for Hannah. We are seeing that both sides are communicating well, are communicating well on both sides. Morrissey again. How about that? 
phenomenal job on Morrissey being able to find that gap in Penn State's block. It looked like looks like the middle was a little bit late coming to close in, and what Morrissey was able to take advantage and hit that seam. Aaron Morrissey just barely hits it over that edge there, so a mistake from her will give Penn State the lead back by one. Right now, Maryland has three serving errors, which again can come back to haunt them coming into the next sets. For sure, against a team like Penn State. Number 14 in the country at 19 wins. They're looking for their 20th today. They've had at least 20 wins in 45 of their first 47 seasons as a varsity sport. So, success that never ends, it seems like. Yeah, Penn State has definitely been one of those teams that has just dominated volleyball playing really every single year. Rohrbach got it blocked down on the far side at Penn State, starting to go on a run, three nothing. Dallar sends it far side. Sire kept in by Grimes. Then Merzik, Maryland, unable to get it over. Good effort by the Terps defense. But Penn State started to make it a little more difficult. Set. So aforementioned earlier, Maryland, a third straight season of at least 500. Talk to head coach Adam Hughes earlier this week and he said he feels like the program is still taking steps little by little to competing in the Big Ten. He said this year is another good step forward. Far side, Sire. Free ball at the front, Rohrbach. Grimes, nice play to keep it in. Merzik, and that's what good defense can do. It sets up even better offense. And for so long in the Big Ten, it's really just been Penn State and Nebraska really fighting for that type, for that top spot. But really, we're starting to see the emergence of like Purdue and Wisconsin and Minnesota trying to fight for those top spots either. And we'll see if this Maryland team can carry that progression as well. That one took a poor touch. And Alexa, you're exactly right. And that Purdue team, they came here very early, the first conference game for this Maryland team and I was wildly impressed by them. A ton of young talent on that team. Eva Hudson, the player of the year last year, a freshman of the year, maybe the player of the year this year, and Chloe Shacoin, a freshman who's really been one of the best players in this whole conference. Yeah, definitely that Purdue team can definitely, when they're coming into their senior seasons, maybe even their junior seasons, can definitely make some good ways coming into the next season. Action pack point here, blocked down. Shinda has to just hit it over from the back row. Wow, Samantha Schnitta from about 14 feet finds the kill. And again, this is what we see from Samantha Schnitta all the time. Again, she's just crafty. That ball was a little wonky on Maryland's side and Schnitta took the chance and tried to send an aggressive attack over the net. The confidence continues to grow on the senior pin hitter. And Holland will send it right back cross court for her kill. That's Holland's first kill of this evening. We'd seen her a little bit go on the attack. She's more known for her defense, but she can get it done offensively. We saw it right there. Holland sends it long. Good play by Sire to let it go. Penn State up by five. Serve from Dowler. Merzik dug out by Gunter. Shit up, blocked. Merzik, the offensive star, getting it done on defense right there. Merzik, when she goes up to block, she goes, she presses her hands as aggressively as she can. And you do see that that's why she got some of those net calls. She was just being a little bit too aggressive, but she goes up strong and wide on those blocks. Here's a serve from Pedraza. 
And that set for Russ was not where she needed it to be. Those two usually very, very good at finding each other that time. Just a little bit of miscommunication and that will prompt a timeout from Adam Hughes once again. Yeah, definitely. That Usually that set usually works between Dowler and Russ. That set usually does work, but it looks like there was an uncommon miscue between the, between the setter and their middle, which sometimes happens, especially when you are trying to run those quick offensive sets. Look at both teams in the timeout right here. 249 as a team that's third best in the Big Ten. Penn State ahead here, second set. Dowler sets it for Russ. Weatherington, that one comes all the way back and a smart play by Pedraza to let it go. Weatherington has her seventh. That was her seventh kill and now she's hitting at a 700. Again, just a great efficiency by Weatherington. Schnitta snipes it in that back corner. Samantha Schnitta. The weather's been cooling down here in Maryland, but she is scorching hot recently. She produced her first double-double last weekend. Yeah, definitely right now she's hitting at 273 again. She's just a very efficient right side again. With that lefty, that lefty side again allows her and opens her up to hit from anywhere on the court. And definitely when we talked to Adam Hughes earlier uh, this week, she he even said that he's proud to see her progression in the back row. That is very true. And Alexa, as a former player, what does seeing a left-handed swing, what does that do to you as a defense? Is it kind of tough to adjust to it? It is very tough to adjust to it because you're so used to right you're so used to righty hitters. When you do have to adjust up to a lefty hitter, you do have to adjust your block a little bit where you may come inside, you have to come inside just a little bit more than you normally would. Well, Penn State is dominating, and that's an example right there. Trammell wins the free ball with ease. Now, they call them free balls for a reason because it's just a free kill, essentially. The senior middle blocker was right there, and she'll make that play 10 out of 10 times. Merzik serves, skims off the net, and Allie Williams wasn't able to get to it as a result. Penn State starting to feel themselves a little bit here in set number two. That's the one thing about Penn State, like no matter what team they've had throughout the years, they've been able to stay together as a team, and they've been able to just stick through no matter what. Penn State on a four nothing run. Can they make it five? No, Russ. A nice play to end the run. Again, Anastasia Russ is a leader on this team in block, so definitely getting her activated on defense a little bit more could help this Maryland team. Russ comes out of the game momentarily. Pedraza near side, Weatherington, you bet. Looked pretty effortless so far for Zoe Weatherington. She's got eight kills. She is making this right side look a little bit too easy. Penn State with 19, Maryland out of timeouts. This time Williams gets to it. And Schnitta tries to send it through the middle. This will be tough for Penn State to get it over, but they do. Dowler near side, Morrissey. Did that deflect? And they'll say no. Right now, Maryland's kind of beating themselves right now. They are making just unforced errors, and they are just aren't really firing on all cylinders right now how they usually are in these in the earlier in the season how they were. Penn State hitting percentage up to 360 on the game. Weatherington again. That was a very out-of-system play. They almost made it work. Pedraza sets it for Holland. And Williams cannot handle it. 
Right now, Penn State's taking advantage of the fact that Maryland is kind of all over the place on defense. So Penn State's able to see on the other side that, hey, Maryland's not there. Let's send the ball here. And Penn State's doing a great job of that. Morrissey from just in front of the 10-foot line. Schnitt up. Anna, wow, thunderous strike. Dug out by Gunter Morrissey on the other side. Another in-system chance for Penn State. Now a whistle. Maryland will get the point. And that point is all to the result of Lily Gunter. Hannah shot a rocket at her and with one arm was able just to bounce it back up and keep it in play for Maryland. Now granted, when we are taught to play volleyball, we're taught not to use one arm, but in those instances, one arms are great. Well, no chance for any arm to make contact with that swing from Penn State. And they're three points away from a two and nothing lead. Dilanovic, the senior, serves it away. Dowler through the middle, Schnitta. A little too much gas on that one. Now granted, Schnitta came from a great position. The ball was in great position. Maybe she got a little bit too excited when she saw that ball. She was like, yes, this is my time. And she sent, sent it straight into the VIP section. I feel like your eyes get real big when you see the ball in that position for your swing. A hundred percent. Morrissey swings and that one is a blot. Holland can always stand there with her arms up and celebrate as she gets a yet another block, her fourth. Set point here in match number two, all Penn State. Dowler, middle Schnitta. The set, Hannah, you bet. Cameron Hannah says good night in set number two. Penn State has a 2 0 lead. Now, definitely going to CC Honoree, and she has been fantastic for this Penn State team. In 18 Big Ten matches, she's got at least double digit kills in 12. Yeah, definitely. We are seeing that again. She's an offensive go to. And we're seeing that again when it's her, Wetherington, and Trammell in that front row. We're seeing that they're unstoppable. Unstoppable. And that was Morrissey. Starts this third set with an error. Maryland in system this time. Good play by Grimes. Hannah. And she is in double-digit kills for the 17th time this season. Again, we were just talking about how, again, she's just so efficient out there. And really, again, that's how she's able to just has a quick arm swing and a quick approach. That's how she's able to beat that block. Holland adds another kill to her night. Penn State is off and running in this third set. This Penn State team has already pretty much solidified themselves as an NCAA tournament team. And that's really no accomplishment to them at this point, Alexa. They've been there 42 years in a row. Yeah, definitely. Again, we saw we saw that huge, huge uh, stint when Russ Rose was was there. He was able to really bring that prominence to Penn State volleyball. They won seven national titles with Rose. And Maryland can't find anything to work for them so far. Rose was the coach from nine, and of course this year they've added some transfers out of the portal. Some of those coming from Big Ten schools as well, and that's starting to become a new thing is players transferring within conference in this portal era. Free ball. Blocked by Holland. 
but out of play, or excuse me, down by her feet. So Schnitta will end that run for Penn State. We asked Adam Hughes how he really felt about the interconference transfer portal stuff, how it's kind of changed the way they've had to coach. He said it's just something they've really had to get used to, and over the past couple of years, they really started to notice it. And it's been kind of interesting to see how players that have flourished against them for other teams have gone to new systems and done even better. Yes, the great thing about this transfer portal is that you're able to find a team that really works for you and works for you as a player and really continue to grow in that system. So it's really great. It's the really great thing about this transfer portal. Villanovic serves it, and that's going to end up being an ace. Seven to one, Penn State. That's their tenth ace of this evening. And so he's speaking to you right now, Maryland's defense and serve receive isn't as strong as it really is commonly when we've seen in earlier matches this season. Lenovic serves it again. In system for Schnitter. Now a set for Penn State. Hannah, way too much for Gunter. I mean, how about the velocity on the swing from Hannah all evening long? I think Hannah definitely had an extra bowl of Frosted Flakes this morning. Got energy, and that Penn State bench has some more. Plenty of reason to be excited for them. They're up 8-1. to one. And another violation on Maryland. We definitely do see that Maryland right now is making a little bit, some subs right now, trying to get some players some rest, but definitely Maryland right now just needs to some, get something going offensively. Valor far side, Sydney Bryant, the freshman with the swing. Hannah, this time Gunter gets it. Bryant again, nice tap, kept in play. Merzik from the back row. Ricks off the head, and somehow Penn State keeps it in. Another chance for Maryland. A long rally brewing, free ball. What's the call here? Officials no signal yet. It looks like the officials will have to converge here. Both teams saying it should be theirs. What did you see, Alexa? Definitely from our angle, it looked like Penn State's when Penn State hit the ball, it hit the antenna first before it hit Layla Ricks' block on Maryland. So definitely we'll see what the refs here see. And they're going to award the point to Penn State. So they're at 10. And Maryland already down 2-0. Need to somehow find a way. Mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Mac Pedraza has been so special. Came over from Penn State after four years, a three-time first-team All-Big Ten honoree. And Penn State right there, that's Merzik. Or excuse me, Pedraza, right on cue right there, blocked from our angle. She gets a kill to her name. Layla Ricks, nice tap. Ricks was third on the, in the team with kills in 2022, but she has pretty much fallen out of this Maryland rotation due to the success of Schnitta, but here she is, third set. That's a nice play from her. Pedraza sets it, Hannah. Picture perfect from those two. Would it be safe to say, being so tomorrow is Thanksgiving, that possibly the pass from Penn State is like the mashed potatoes? Where it's like, you're okay with it, but then Mac Perdoja is like the mac and cheese. You're looking forward to it. And then the finisher is Hannah. She's the turkey. That's what you're definitely looking forward to. I, I like this comparison. Everyone goes together to create the perfect meal, in this sense being a free-flowing offense. 
that is just putting it on this Maryland team. 13 to two. I hate to say it, but I do feel like Maryland is like the casserole that your aunt brings right now. Maryland has certainly had a tough time here, especially in this third set. And that one is gonna be another service ace, the 13th for the Nittany Lions. Maryland starting to get a little bit of deja vu maybe to that Wisconsin match. That third set was especially a runaway from the Badgers. The Nittany Lions are replicating pretty much the same thing right now. Free ball. Pedraza sets it for Merzik. Good play by Dowler to block it down. Great See the excitement still. Great job on Dowler for pressing her hands and pushing it right back down to her Penn State. Maryland, a team that will always have the excitement no matter what. That's what Hughes talks about a lot. He said even when they've had their stretches where they've gone on losing streaks, you wouldn't even be able to tell by the way they practice. Still high energy from their team at no matter what. Morrissey, oh, how about that, the cross-court kill. This is the fight that we need to see in Maryland, just consistently coming at Penn State no matter where they are in the set. Penn State stays on the road after this game. They'll take on a solid Ohio State team, not ranked this year. And there's a nice block by Morrissey and Rohrbach on that far side. Well, Penn State trying to tune up before the tournament. Maryland will have Rutgers here at the PAV on Friday. You can watch that on Big Ten Plus. They'll be trying to just pick up a little bit of momentum before the offseason. Merzik blocked. Good play at the front by Morrissey. But she hit it out of play evidently. It was the right idea. It was... A good thought by Morrissey, but evidently found the red instead of the brown. Not sure if that, if Maryland thought it might have took a deflection based on the reaction from all of them. They might have thought it was their point there for a second. McGillivray digs it out through the middle. Schnitter, just a little bit too long. Jess Merzik. Usually a lot more impactful on the offensive side, but she hasn't really had to be that kind of player today. Yeah, definitely again, you're seeing all around, this Penn State team has just stayed consistent from the first point in the match to these couple points finishing here in the third set. And there's been a lot of miscommunication from that Maryland back row. That's an example of it right there. You can definitely see the frustration set settling over on Maryland's side right now. Alexa, when you're put back against the wall, essentially, like Maryland has, how do you keep your confidence up and just continue to get through this set? Really, again, just have to keep, keep things simple. Do go back to the things that have made you successful in the first place and just try to get yourself out of the hole. And when you know you see a green light to swing, you take that green light. But until then, you're really at a yellow light right now. Penn State is on a 4 nothing run. Jocelyn Nathan. A freshman defensive specialist into the game. Three-time All-State selection from Delaware. Here's Merzik. Free ball at the front. Dowler tried to pass it, but that will in turn get a violation on Penn State. More substitutions coming for Penn State. Starting to give some of the young talent some reps here in this third set. Here's Aaron Angle's serve. Pedraza for Merzik. Too much on it from Penn State. You have to wonder, maybe anybody in the VIP section has played volleyball. 
You have to wonder. Or maybe even the cheerleaders back there. What if they have played? In system, Maryland. Morrissey. Didn't get it. Here's Merzik. Yes. Katie Schumacher, Kali, has to love what she's seen from her team today. Alexa, it's really astonishing to think about. This is Penn State's third coach in program history. They've been a team for 48 years. Yeah, definitely. It really speaks to, again, Russ Rose was at that helm for 30-plus years. So really, we're seeing that this new era, but again, continued success by Penn State. Nineteen on the board for the Nittany Lions. The Terps just trying to get something going. Mercek, you bet. Hitting percentage still at 359 for Penn State. That'll tell you all you need to know about how great they've been offensively. Rick's a nice tap. Weatherington, the big swing, kept in play by Daller. Another chance for Ricks. Weatherington, second time, can't get it. Can Morrissey. How about Hannah? Nope, blocked. And somehow Mercer keeps it in and Grimes sends it over. Daller in system, Anastasia Russ out of play. And how about that from Penn State? Mercer somehow hustled all the way to that back line to keep it in and it pays off in the end. And we'll be four points away from sealing their 20th win. Mac Pedraza, over 5,000 assists in her career. And even she's into the dance. Well, you have to clap your hands when he says, clap your hands. Well, there's a lot of smiles on the floor right now. Most of them coming from Penn State for good reason. Official signaling to the video cameraman to take a step back. Trying to get some action shots here in these final moments. Morrissey comes all the way up. This is a free ball, and Russ with a phenomenal play to keep that one down for a kill. Great job on Russell taking that aggressive swing. Maryland still fighting. Blocked down, but point over to Penn State. They're three points away. It'll be Trammell to Sherv. Ricks tried to tap it, that one works. Holland couldn't get enough on it. Layla Ricks has taken more on that defensive role for Maryland, but it's great to see that she's able to work on that offensive side and give Maryland a better look offensively. Holland tries to tap it, whistle. And what's the call here? So it did happen to be that I guess one of the ball people rolled the ball a little incorrectly and it almost rolled onto Maryland's side. You did hear an explicitive out of Penn State, but granted, they replay. So on the replay, Hannah sends it right down into the arms of Daller and out of play.
I remember as a serve. kid. Go ahead. I remember as a kid playing club games and a ball roll over on your court. That's all you had to say was an explicit. Right, trying to get it over, and Pedraza a little bit frustrated. She could not handle it. Sydney Bryant, 2022 Gatorade Player of the Year nominee from Upper Marlboro. Went to high school in Virginia at Flint Hill. Won two state titles there. That'll come out of play, and we are at match point. Penn State fans have gotten on their feet. Cameron Hanna has had a big day with 15 kills. She'll be the one to serve it. And out of play it goes. The celebration will have to wait a little longer. The Alex McGillivray, freshman out of California, a teammate in club volleyball with Eva Rohrbach. And that deflects out of play, and Penn State has its 20th win of the season. They get a clean sweep here in College Park. Yeah, definitely we see this Penn
रिकॉर्डिंग स्टूडियो सिमरा